yeah, it's like I did a, I wrote a joke with Blake Griffin, the basketball player, one time where it was like, they're asking guys, they're interviewing guys after they've just, ex- they, they're trying not to, they're getting, they're trying to get oxygen to their brain. Right. Like it's a bad time to do an interview. Well, I was doing interviews with people after they got knocked unconscious. And, and I, do you feel, are you kind of like, ah, uh, I do you not like it? It's not a good time to interview people. They make mistakes because, like, you just had your brain shut off. Like, so maybe they think they want to fight or maybe they think something. They don't know what the fuck just happened. And it, there's yeah. varying degrees of that. Like, you can pretend, oh, he knows he's playing dumb. But you have zero idea what's going on in a person's brain unless you are them and you have been knocked out. Did because, they have a policy of like not doing that anymore, or you well, still I do it? Well, I said I won't do it, and then I fucked up and did it with uh, Daniel Cormier. But I was so confused in that fight because uh, Daniel's a good friend. I love him to death, and John Jones had just knocked him out, and I was in this state. This is not. Is this recent or no? No, this was a few years back. Yeah. I haven't done any like knockouts interviews since, but I think I did a couple of TKOs, and I think it's a, a judgment call. Like there's sometimes when the guy's getting fucked up, but it's really like he's just beaten. He's getting his legs kicked and punched. And the referee yeah. comes and stops the fight, but he's okay. Like he's n- he just got fucked up. He's not an out cold. But sometimes guys get knocked out cold, and when they get knocked out cold, like ooh, you're you. You don't really know because they went away. Yeah, and then they come back. Yeah, and it's and they're in an some arena some, for fine. some reason. Yeah, some guys are fine and they handle it with grace and dignity, and you know they're amazing at it. And that's also depending upon that knockout versus a different knockout. Like what happened to you that day? Like how bad did you get beat up before you got knocked out? Was it just one punch? Was it a kick to the head? Is a kick to head worse than a punch to the head? Even though both knock you out, the force of a kick is way higher. So you don't really know. You don't really know until you're talking to them. And they, I don't think you really will ever know. Because a lot of people could talk on autopilot. And then they'll tell yeah. you. like they go back I don't remember to the, talking to you. Yeah, they go back to the dressing room. They have no idea they fought. And then they're in the hospital room afterwards. They don't know what happened. And they lose like hours of the night. It's really common. Yeah. So the, to ask them to but do But I think you're interview. smart, to get back to the original thing, you're smart to reset your hierarchy yes. where you're fucking exhausted and you want to just breathe and get your body back to like a reg but and you still have all that like exercise drain slash tingle there's, there's that too there's like you you exhaust yourself which i think is very good for you my brother it, kevin it used to you of the stress used to jog every day to run the brennan out of them <laughs> <laughs> Like, we got bad shit in us. I have to run it out of me. That's hilarious. It's fucking very funny. And hey, and but that that's a smart approach. There's so there's two things going on. There's the physical thing where you're wringing out the stress, which I think is very real. It makes you feel better and it's easier to get by. But then there's also the psychological thing. Because to work out really hard is very difficult to do. And you think things are difficult until you compare them to things that are very difficult. Mm-hmm. Like very difficult things. Like if you have, if say if you're going on a hike in the mountains and you're going to backpack in and camp out. And it's 14 miles mm-hmm. in. You have a 70-pound backpack. Because you have all your food. You have your bedding. You have a tent. You have all this shit on your back, you and your friends, and you're walking 13, 14 miles in. Mm -hmm. That's fucking hard. Yeah. When you're 9,000 feet above sea level, you're like, (sighs) yeah. That's real hard. Yeah. It's not comments on fucking Twitter. Yeah. That's not really hard. Yeah. That is easy to ignore. It's easy. Like yeah. you have the option to ignore it and life well, the, goes on. Your brain or you have the can't even your brain's like, yo, I can't worry yeah. about it. like you could you'll have a flash of it. Yeah. You're like, I can't we can't fuck it. And dude, you're gonna you gotta breathe and you gotta get the you're you're gonna perish. Yeah, but you also gotta do difficult shit. You do difficult shit to change what your watermark is. Like what what's your your mark of like normalcy? And if your ability to handle difficult situations and discomfort is at a very low level, you are going to be miserable forever. You've got to elevate your ability to withstand discomfort. So the things that are discomfort 
very discomfortable for you most raise people. Your bar they aren't as bad for you. They aren't right. as bad for you. And if you can get there, it's a better place to be. It's you a, just make yourself resilient by yeah. just it's like the throwing the medicine ball in your stomach, and just fucking getting the fucking. Yeah, you're getting like mental. Like if you have to, if you're doing like endurance work on a bike, like doing sprints on one of those air dye machines. You are you or you are not capable of thinking of anything else. Mm -hmm. You're barely surviving those workouts. You're like fuck. There's these things called Tabata sprints. It's a great protocol for developing endurance. And you do a 20 second sprint followed by 10 seconds of rest. It's the shortest 10 seconds you'll ever experience uh -huh. in your life. Because then right after that, it's another 20 yeah. seconds. Even the I do high interval training for just running. Oh. You just sprint for for a minute. Mm. And then not for a minute, and you're like, "Boy, that was a pretty quick knot. <laughs> that fucking <laughs> yeah. slowdown was not." I think they fuck with the clocks a little bit yeah, on that one. It's time is relative. It's very relative.